could the crime wave be starting again? The NYPD and Laura's friends go to the marquee to find out if something happened inside the club that led to Laura's disappearance. Inside the Marquis's security headquarters, one club employee said she saw Laura that night. You need to find out who he is. But the cameras only show a glimpse of what happened, and the mystery remains. But Alonzo is not the only person Skyler recruits. He buddies up to another fellow convict, J.P. Jarvie. John Jarvie was a cellmate of Skyler's at the Seal Beach Jail. Skyler once again started to weave his magic and convinced JP that he had a surefire way to, for JP to make big money because he had connections in Mexico. Skyler goes, if you can get as much money as you can together, I can double your money in a day. JP also spends his days out of jail. And taken in by Skyler's hard sell, he manages to get the money. And J.P. Jarvie put together about $50,000. Claire Schwartz is the first family member to arrive at her father's house. But nothing could have prepared her for the gruesome crime scene police discovered two hours earlier. Anybody uh, notify the family yet? Yeah, we called it. What a mess. Nothing uh, appeared to be missing. Uh, there was no sign of our sentry, uh, leading us to believe that this was uh, a personal killing committed by someone that the victim knew. Come on. A teen vampire romance novel? That's not going to catch on. Uh, 1940s jazz musicians, that's what people really want to hear about and read about, too. Huh. Come on, I, I don't need this. Can you sit down? I'll, I'll get you some coffee, okay? You're gonna get me some coffee? I will. Honest? Yeah, you, you love coffee, sit down. All right. All right, I know you love cookies too. I'm gonna get you some cookies. I just got off the phone with Dr. Farthing, and it looks like my long battle with cancer is finally over. And, uh, cancer won. 